Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Ten Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another beautiful ship from the Steam Workshop. Now, this particular vessel is from the Star Trek Discovery series by Flygator, and I have to say, it is very beautiful indeed. A combination of round shapes that is extremely rare to space engineers. You don't see curves of this nature, and you know I'm a man who enjoys curvy ships. Just look at that, beautiful. Anyway, let's take a look around. Right at the start over here, I wanna first announce that this ship is completely vanilla, so all the effects that it is actually built into this and curves, this is actually a small ship block that is attached on into this area. And we all know that small ship blocks are great for building that detail, and these are just LCD monitors, something I don't think I've seen before, and he's used them LCD monitors to create that beautiful glowing texture around that cannon itself. So as we move around the side a little bit, you'll notice we've got some rocket pods tucked in the side, and look how he's staggered the armor. He's, it looks very round from a distance, but up close you can see the jagged edges, and that's something that we're always going to have to deal with in Space Engineers, but just look how he's ribbed certain areas, and to create that round effect a little bit more, he's also changed the color and tone of this inner sort of burgundy red type. And then on top of there, we have got ourselves the logo. Now you're probably wondering how the logo's been created, and once again, he's inserted a small ship block in there, and then simply written the name of the ship on the side. Very simple, very cool, and very effective. So as we work our way to the rear here, this is what I quite like. I like quite like this top area. You see how it's got these two um, sort of vertical wing-like shapes, and you've got this trench that runs down the side here. And the, what these trenches do on a lot of these ships' designs is they create a shadow that makes it just feel like it's got a little bit more detail into it. And you can see how he's created the shadows here, as well as using these detailed sections as well, that just create that nice little bit of ribbon effect that we do all love. So let's work our way underneath the ship. And underneath, we've got ourselves the similar sort of round disc shape, but in the center, we actually have ourselves a very, very beautiful little bridge that is descending. And since it's underneath, it means it's relatively protected. Obviously, the line of sight is pretty good as well. So coming back into this area, we've got two signal lights and this cool little assembly of cut-down blocks. Now, cut-down blocks is something I quite like to see. Obviously, not super functional. And if we have a look into this area, you can see how he's created the angle. He's actually just built these on what I can tell is a simple rotary joint. And he's connected them together so the two engines come down the side and you get that really unique sloped look that a lot of artists in Space Engineers try to go for, but it just depends if they can actually pull it off or not. And you can also see we've got this red tint and that's simply been created by using them interior lights. Absolutely beautiful. There's, there's so much going on in this ship. And he's just, he must have just kept looking back at reference, then building, reference, then building. And that is how you design a perfect sort of replica or a stylized ship from that particular genre. Anyway, let's work our way to the landing pad at the back. Now, I'm not going to go to the character and move through because the character is a little bit laggy due to the size of the ship. If I put this on, you can see these unsafe grids and these performance issues going on. But as we enter into the hangar bay, we are greeted with a surprisingly large interior. This is a little bit of a TARDIS of a ship. As we go through into here, we enter into this little corridor that is, of course, a little airlock so we can depressurize and then enter into these other various catacombs. Now, one thing I've noticed about this ship is he's not labeled a few of the entrance ways, so you will get yourself a little bit lost, but if you know the layout of the ship anyway, you can find yourself around quite quick. So here we go. Here's one of the first label points. From the back, it is a little bit confusing because you've got three entrance points, but they pretty much lead all the same way unless you end up in the reactor and you fall down that hole and just get stuck there. But otherwise, if you take left or right, you go in the right way anyway. So we've got the bridge labeled there. We've got a little bit of an overall schematics that's giving you more directions on where to go. And if we head up into this area, you can see we've got this like over sort of all overseer area where we can walk around. We've got the captain's room labeled. We have ourselves the mid decks. Is that say mid decks? I think it does. The logo's a little bit blurry. And then we've got the computers over here. Let's take a look in the computer room. Just look how big is this interior? It's it's so it's so confusing from the outside. It looks like a big ship, but since it's so thin. You don't imagine that this much stuff is inside. So we've got a lot of empty rooms in this area. Obviously, if you were using this in a survival sense, it would be perfect because you could just equip it with whatever you need. But well, this is a lovely little room, especially this area in the center. I guess this is a sort of canteen. We've got the canteen tables, some lights, some music to be played as we're nibbling away on our food. Let's head further through the ship. 
and we've got a light in and in this way we've got the med bay labeled to that way that's labeled with a nice red door as well just in case you want to spawn in there and we have the OBS area I believe it's called let's have a quick look through here see what's in here just more spare rooms by the look of it let's continue working through the main bulk of the ship so as we come to this area we're reaching the far extent of it and we've got ourselves more of these little spacious rooms that we can equip with whatever but i do like the corridor layout it feels like a ship that you'd get lost in and that that's what i like i like a ship that's designed not just to get you lost but at the same time has corridors that connect up all the individual locations so it's fast to get around so you can see how this corridor just cuts straight through the center them various areas and back into the middle very nicely laid out indeed so let's drop down the deck and we'll go to the food court area so now as we've dropped down we can actually head down this area to the bridge well, that's quite surprising you can imagine if there was an incident in the food court you'd have a lot of food and different bits rolling down into the bridge area so we've got ourselves one last protective area and into the bridge so the bridge itself is stunning I, I love this bridge and once again it's a combination of the small and large ship blocks so just have a look at this layout. We've got all the buttons. We've got alerts. We've got gray alert, yellow alert, all the alerts that we need. And we've got the audible alert. So you can see here is a layout of the ship as well on that screen. So it is different parts are damaged. You can see where the med bays and different components are. You'll be fine. Absolutely beautiful. Over on this side, we also have the radar. So we can pick up different um, items on the radar as well. Very nice. Very functional as well. We've got a little bit of a gap there that you can get yourself stuck in. But if you're quite careful, you can head yourself up to the main command chair and you've got a beautiful little view and we've got the two driving seats here or pilot seats I better call them where you can see yourself on the grid as you fly through the area now I think that leads me to test one more thing first of all let's hop into the captain's chair and I believe we're going to need to access a remote control bot to actually pilot this thing so let's go onto our menu and go to pilot controls hit control and now we are actually in control of the ship itself. The only issue is, remember, since it's using that seat, it's easier to fly from first person. Um, so you can see my head's actually missing. So let's actually power this guy up, see what sort of acceleration we've got and turning. So this for this a ship of this size, um, we've got a good little bit of gyroscope and sort of movement left and right. But the most important thing is, a few patches ago, this ship wouldn't be able to even hold itself together especially at these speeds with all these components and them angled rotors at the back so i'm trying to get you some different angles there but you can see the issue is if i go too high up it'll lock me back into the cockpit into first person perspective but we've got very fast speed we've got very fast um, sort of deacceleration and our turning left and right isn't too bad it could be better in that department but this is a beautiful concept for a survival ship and it's something you definitely want to see out there as you're traveling through the various galaxies anyway let me know what you think of this ship in the description, well not in the description, in the comments below and there'll be a link in the description so you can check it out yourself. Anyway, I'll see you next time.